my first question is, how was Evernote born? Well, well um, we actually had uh, two different teams that um, have been working on a, on a similar concept that came together in 2007. So there was, a, there was an original team that was actually started by um, this famous uh, Russian-American uh, scientist entrepreneur named uh, Stepan Pajikov, and uh, he had a team of people working on this idea of uh, memory capture and image recognition starting in, I think, 2005 in California. And then uh, I started uh, working on similar concepts in, in Boston in 2007 uh, with a small team of people from my last company. Uh, we met in uh, the summer of 07 and basically decided to, uh, to merge, the, you know, merge the two teams together. So we uh, kind of remade the company in uh, 07 and uh, launched the first Evernote product in uh, the summer of 08. So right now, the Evernote product is so uh, um, versatile. You can use it actually on basically any kind of, um, of support from uh, Google Chrome to uh, your iPhone or your iPad. So my next question would be, uh, what do you think the next kind of integrations and cross compatibility will be? Well, uh, you know, our, our goal is to really have Evernote be your, your trusted external brain for life. So it, it has to be on every, on every gadget that you'll own, every device, uh, you know, every platform. So we, we make sure we have versions on uh, just about everything. Um, you know, it's whatever, whatever computer or phone or camera or browser or any other device that you kind of get your hands on, you should know that Evernote's going to be on it. Uh, so we kind of have a constant effort to, to put it onto. Um, uh, all sorts of things. Um, so we have all of the major platforms that we continue to improve, uh, and we're also working on a lot of integrations with other uh, systems. Um, so in the near future, we'll see much better support for things like uh, calendaring and uh, to-do lists, uh, better support for um, the kind of applications and products that you use every day. So, um, can you tell me if there is going to be some sort of uh, change in the type of product that Evernote is? Is it going to have something more? Is it going to become actually some sort of project management tool? Well, um, you know, the, the vision is really to just make a system that makes you smarter and, and happier and, and more productive. Um, so, it's. It's, we're really serious about this, this second brain, this external brain idea. So anything that you can put into your brain, we want you to be able to put into Ever, Evernote and uh, you know, make your life easier. So the, the core service will stay very simple, uh, but there'll be lots of ways to get information into it and, and, and out of it. Uh, some through applications that we'll write, some through third-party applications. Uh, and we've, we've already started that process about, I guess, in the, in the past year. So we've released several new products in the past couple of months, uh, like Evernote Food and Hello. Um, that are meant to give you a specific, beautiful experience around one particular type of thing, but put it all into the context of Evernote. And we'll, we'll be doing a bunch more of that. So you were talking uh, earlier about the image recognition feature. Mm -hmm. um, that's one very interesting feature that I think none other have, actually. So I'd like to know where the idea came from and uh, what's the technology behind it. Well, the image recognition stuff is... is, uh, is is kind of the core of um, you know, the first R&D of the company. So this was uh, Stefan's team um, that had worked on this idea of handwriting recognition, text recognition, kind of image cleanup for probably more than 20 years now. Um, uh, y you probably don't remember. Uh, there's a product called the Apple Newton. Uh, you know, way back in the, I think like 89, 90, it was the first, uh, the first ever tablet. Oh, yeah. uh, and it was actually it was actually the team that worked on the on the handwriting recognition from that is the same team that's that's building it in, at Evernote. So that that core, the, the image recognition core, is really kind of a, a very long standing part of the company, and we've built a lot of other you know, kind of newer things uh, on top of it over the past couple of years. Okay, so can you tell me a little bit more about what, what's been done? Well, the the basic idea of what we have in the image stuff is um, a lot of the world you you, you remember you remember visually. Um, you know, some things you want to write down kind of on, on, on the computer, some things you hear, but, but really the human brain is, 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 is set up so that most of our memory is very visual in, in nature. So we're working very hard to make the visual component a good part of your memories. Uh, so the way it currently works is we set up to search for uh, words, for printed and handed words inside of pictures. So if you uh, take a picture of a bottle of wine that you like at a restaurant, uh, you'll be able to search for that later and find it. Or if you have a meeting and you fill up a whiteboard, 
you could take a picture of the whiteboard and search for the text there, or uh, business cards, or notes, or kind of anything like that. Um, and the, the, the way this works is that the, the most difficult part is when we actually examine an image and we try to figure out whether or not it has any text in it. Um, to, to, to determine whether something is text or a shadow from a tree or a fence or something like that is really the toughest part. Um, once, once that's done, and, and that's done through a, you know, a, a neural net algorithm that we've developed in-house uh, that we process all of our images through. So we have these tons of servers sitting in our data centers and uh, every time you send an image that goes, goes through these servers, they search for any text in there. Uh, once we think that there may be text in there, then we, you know, we have a, a, a number of different algorithms uh, for trying to figure out you know, what language is it in, what, what, what words might it be, and we you know, give it a percentile chance to be uh, different types of matches, and then we index everything so you can search for it later on. Um, but that's really just kind of a first step. Um, we combine that with uh, your location information, uh, your time and, and you know time and date information, any other tags or textual information you put in to kind of give you a very rich index of of all your memories. So, um, can you give me uh, some numbers for Evernote? Sure, we have about. Um, we have about 22 million users right now, uh, worldwide. Um, we uh, we started, uh, that's more than doubled in about the past six months. I think six months ago when we had like 10, 10 million or something. Um, so we're growing uh, quite quickly. Uh, I forget, I forget how many total, you know, notes we have, but I know we have well over a billion um, just sort of memories, items stored. Um, uh, but I. I don't remember the exact count anymore. Uh, we're adding about 60,000 new people every day. So every day about 60,000 new people start using Evernote for the first time, uh, which is uh, which is kind of amazing. Um, I kind of get surprised just thinking about it. It's, uh, you know, 60,000 people is like a giant sports stadium. So whenever you like see like a giant totally packed stadium, I think like that many people started using Evernote for the first time, you know, just yesterday. Yeah, that's that's uh, amazing. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, we're very, very, uh, very surprised by it. You know, I was just wondering. I've been using Evernote, and um, I was wondering if if it will actually have some other features. Since you've been talking about the second brain, you know, there are some um, applications that you know can can make you map your mind. Uh, mm -hmm. Is Evernote ever going to go in that direction? Um, yeah, you know, we have a lot of. Um, um, we have a full API, and our, our goal is to actually have uh, lots of lots of integrated products that that, that do something beautiful uh, inside of Evernote. Some of these things we'll develop ourselves; others we'll go through partners. Um, we have about nine thousand uh, third-party developers uh, participating in the API program. And there's you know there's, there's hundreds that have actually been launched uh, you know live products. Uh, I, I know there's at least a couple of mind mapping. Programs uh, in there, so I think some of some of the some of the bigger mind mapping software has Evernote integration built in, but that's developed by the, you know, by the mind mapping companies. Um, in terms of what we ourselves would do as Evernote, uh, we kind of have this, this very, very specific test when we're thinking about a new feature. We say whenever we start thinking about a new feature, we ask, uh, will a hundred million people use this? Um, and if the answer is if the answer is no, a hundred million people probably aren't going to use this right away. Then um, we don't prioritize it. Then you know somebody else should do it. Um, if we think that 100 million people would use it, then you know then it's then it's a um, it's something that we would consider building. And to me, something like mind mapping is it, it's very cool, but it, it's still kind of a niche application. It's still kind of uh, you know very fairly specialized to people who really want to do that kind of stuff. I don't think that in general mind mapping passes the 100 million user test. Whereas you know keeping track of what you eat, for example, like with Evernote food, like yeah. 100 million people will do that. So that's the kind of thing that we would develop. So I think we're going to focus more on the, um, um, more on the really uh, potent uh, things that are applicable to millions and billions of people. But then hopefully have an ecosystem where other partners can do the rest of the stuff. OK, so basically, um, since my, my biggest uh, curiosity here was about the you know, integration of different kinds of, of utilities actually you know mm -hmm. because you have some project management tools that do some things 
others that do some other things, those who have milestones, those who have calendars, and you have the to-do lists uh, applications, and then you have mm -hmm. the, the notes applications, and it's all, you know, it's not just one thing in one place, so you can actually centralize everything and make it more productive. Right. Well, well it, is, it is all one thing in one place with Evernote, so all of those things right. that are integrated with Evernote put everything together. Cool. Very cool. So what are your perspectives for the near future? Wow, well, uh, let's see. Uh, I've got two more meetings after I finish with you and then lunch. Uh, and then I think about six more before I can, before I can leave. So the near term is it's quite busy. And then I'm going to Japan in the next couple of days. Um, so that's busy <laughs> as well. Uh, you know, it's actually fairly difficult to, uh, um, to make much plans past the uh, you know, a week or two at this point. Everything here is just so, you know, it's gotten so crazy over the past, uh, the past couple of weeks or months. Um, so it's hard to say. Um, you know, our, our, our goal is um, uh, to expand Evernote in, in, you know, pretty much every country. So we're spending a lot more attention in Europe uh, this year. Uh, we've sort of, we haven't really been focusing on Europe that much in the past. We spent a lot more time in, in, in Japan and in Asia, but I think 2012 I'll be, I'll be going down to Europe a lot more and really trying to get... Uh, uh, really trying to understand, uh, you know, what are the unique use cases? What do people want? What are the high-value partnerships that we can do, uh, and uh, start working on those? Um, could you tell me what is the country that uses Evernote the most, or the first three countries? Well, the, I mean, the, the, our mo our biggest single country is the U.S. Uh, that's about thirty-five percent of our users are in the U.S. Uh, but you know, we started here, so that's that's kind of to be expected. Uh, Japan is the second biggest. Japan is a uh, um, it's actually almost as many people use this in Japan as in the U.S. But of course, Japan's a much smaller country, so per capita, we're we're, we're more popular in Japan. Um, Europe is is all of Europe taken together is is our largest uh, is our largest market. Um, but that's that's really new as of just a couple of months ago. Um, the growth in Europe has been. Uh, significantly faster than, than anywhere else just in the past couple of months. So I think at this point it's something like um, you know 30 something percent of all of our usages in Europe. Uh, so it kind of goes Europe as a you know as, as, as one continent and then US and then Japan. Uh, in Europe the biggest countries are uh, you know Germany, um, UK, France. Um, I think it pretty much mirrors just the, the population breakdown. Right. So you're, you're gonna look for uh, collaborations in Europe? Yeah, we just what opened up an for? Well, um, you know, we just announced that we just opened our, our first European office in, in Zurich. Um, so we'll be building out a, a team uh, in Europe uh, to do to do product development. Um, basically, we want we want parts of Evernote to be built everywhere. Um, we don't just do the development in one place. We kind of want to spread it out and get the the best ideas, the best designers uh, from all over the world. Uh, we just announced our first major partnership in Europe, which is with uh, with Orange in, in France. Um, so Orange is um, is uh, giving actually a premium version, uh, Evernote Premium, to all of their subscribers in France, and we're we're working on similar deals with other carriers in, in, in all the other countries. Um, and then we look for um, uh, basically uh, developers, uh, people that we will that we want to integrate with, that we want to build Evernote functionality uh, with. Uh, so most of our focus in local markets is uh, developer relations. Cool. So when are you coming? down to Europe? Uh, me personally? Yes. I was actually su supposed to go there at the end of this week, but I think that got postponed. So, uh, but I'll, I'll, you know, I'll certainly be there in, at least in February at the latest. Thank, Thank you, you so much for being with us tonight. My, my absolute pleasure.